evening. It's Jeff from RV Diagnostics. Um, July the 8th, 2024. It's hot out there in Delaware. It got up to 105 today, or it feel like, right? But it's about 82 here in the garage, probably 60% humidity. I put me an air conditioner in, so that's not what I'm making a video over. This is a diesel pusher here, all right? It doesn't matter what it is, but it's a 7370. Um, we did some preventive maintenance on it, like oil change on the 3126 Caterpillar, and we used Caterpillar oil filter. Uh, then we did the generator, right? We did the fuel filter, oil change, all that, and, you know, mark the hours on it and all that good stuff. But the number one filter that doesn't get changed is the air compressor. On a diesel pusher, the air compressor dryer, desiccant dryer. Okay, so I'm a instead of being under the RV and you know kind of tight under there, uh, I took the device out, the receiver uh, uh, air dryer. Okay, okay. Now here's the key on most of it. A lot of y'all got your air brakes going on and all that, so you want to discharge everything below 65 psi. Psh, 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 hit your hit your brake pedal a couple of times, right? Whether you got single gauge, front and rear gauge, all right. And then you start the engine, and the diesel's going. And once the buzzer goes off, this one, the buzzer don't work. Anyway, that's another problem. But as soon as you get the 65 psi buzzer off, you need to count with a timer, and it has to be under three minutes to where you hit 120 psi blow off that you hear three minutes and under it'd be better if it was like two minutes and under but three minutes is i i, I believe the the ruling of air brake like a lot of you should be made to take a cdl air brake portion because you would learn a lot more about your air suspension system just that part not everything on the cdl but here we go. And it is the most neglected filter ever. And most of them look like an upside down oil filter. So here we go. We're going to go over some stuff. One, it's up under there. Right, you know, right up in there. Okay, so here's the tools I'm going to go over. And I'm going to talk to you. And then I'm going to show you the. This one and a quarter inch wrench. This is the input. All right, so it's sitting like this. Right, it's in a bracket. Right, that's the strap it held it on. This comes from the air compressor, and it's one and a quarter inch. What that is, it's a flexible line braided, all right, because this one's on the frame, and it comes off the engine. Some of them are mounted right to the engine, the dryer, so you'd have a flexible line coming off the output side. But this one happens to be inch and a quarter flexible line and what I mean is it's wrapped up it's rubber most likely but it's wrapped up in a stainless steel mesh the next one you'd have to take off is the output side right here right right there output side that is the 15 16 now remember when you're doing this you want to hold this and spin the line all right be careful uh, you were supposed to discharge all your air prior to this. All right. A lot of you, the airbags will hold pressure. And when I get under these things, I chalk them off, block them up. I don't even use the hydraulic leveling system. I just stick stuff under there. All right. Big old blocks here. Here we go. Right there. I don't. I don't. Now, my luck, 65 years old in two days, <laughs> got squashed by a 30,000 pound coach. There you go. So you can do what you want. You can put it up on hydraulic levelers. I don't know. I wouldn't. I'd block it off. But um, so that line is usually a plastic line coming out. All right. The output, the one and a quarter flexible line was the input from the air compressor. The output was 15 sixteenths, most of them. All right. Right there. In, out. And then this is the governor line, all right? Because that's 
the 120. When you hear a psh, and here is a heater element that goes in here. All right. So you're like, okay, you were talking about this upside down oil filter. Well, I was. There it is. It's a mid, right? Midland growl, midland growl, and hand tighten only. It's just like a big oil filter. Here's the brand new one, and they're heavy. All right, they are heavy. This is a Haldac system dryer kit maintenance DQ60. Two six. All right, so hopefully you didn't see that in there because that's my daughter texting me that I call her mortgage company. I don't know. Anyway, so now this is the other part number they were using B00480 M Quebec Tango Golf. All right, so the line that takes this off is seven sixteenths it's a little plastic line all right it comes from the air compressor and says okay that's enough psi and all this good stuff all right so what is the nine sixteenths for well this was held on by a big clamp into a bracket where the nine sixteenths bolt was there so this is where it slides into the bracket so you're saying well why didn't you do it under there? Well, I'm going to show you just what happens. Remember, this is, uh, I think the production date on this one's like 2000, 1999 or something like that. But uh, there you go. F8, that's original. <laughs> I'm afraid to clean it up. Anyway, yeah, 19, let's see, 7, 9, I don't know. Anyway, it's a 99 coach. All right, it's original. So, this is setting up like this. The filter goes right here. You can see where the lands are. And you can see that nasty water down there. Now, I tipped it over, and water came out, all right, and oil sludge. So there's another filter that goes in this, right, right here. It goes down like this. And sits in there and that stops if the desiccant lets go that's all desiccant in there it stops it from going down in there don't forget this one get the kit most of them have it some go up in there rare that's there's different there's a couple different models all right so we're just gonna put it back together and slap it up there i'm just showing you all right you even got a little kit here right hold on there you go. So this one. Ugh, right there. Uh, so there's, there's the relief valve. There's a little filter there. It goes behind there. There's the O-ring. Alright, so I'll be taking that off, right? That's quarter inch stuff right there. There you go. So I'm just trying to show you that's the most neglected filter there is. So remember, do your test. At 65 PSI, pump the brake pedal. Engine not running. All right. And you turn the key on that annoying damn buzzer. And there's a reason why there's one. Then start your engine. When the buzzer goes off, 65 PSI roughly. You got three minutes or less to reach 120 PSI. Blow off. That means you got enough flow and the flow. You can have pressure, but not enough flow. So what happens at 65 PSI when you're driving down a road? Your brakes lock up, folks. Rear brakes are lock up. Wham! And you blow out a tire, and then that tire goes a flying, and it wipes out some electrical and plastic and fiberglass. And mm. so what I've done, it's I don't know if it's approved or not. I like to know before 65 PSI if there's a problem. <laughs> I'll put an 80 PSI switch on mine. It activates the same buzzer, so I ain't got to change nothing. And at 85 PSI, if it goes, eh, I got a pedal or two to hit the brakes and pull over. Okay? You can do what you want with the 85 PSI. You don't have to do it. 
Well, we'll say it's a little annoying every now, especially in city traffic, because I'll be hitting and it goes down to 85 PS. Oh, I just kind of put up with it because I know one thing. When I'm traveling down the road at 55, 60 mile an hour, and I get that 85 PSI buzzer, I got to get the heck over. All right, so it it helps. Thank you very much, Jeff from RV Diagnostics.